Well, both Brent and U.S. crude oil have been trading around the 80 to 85 dollars a barrel level in August, although Brent hit 87 dollars on the 10th of August and U.S. crude also went up to 84 the same date, driven by increasing signs of a tightening market. However, demand concerns in China has also weighed on crude prices more recently as investors consider the impact on oil in the world's second largest economy. Well, let's go live now to energy and economic analyst Osama Rizvi for more on this in Lahore. Now, Osama, you are somebody who certainly keeps across the oil market and there's a lot to go through at the moment. So I'm going to try and ask some of the questions that our investors and traders might be interested in. Firstly, Osama, EIA weekly data showed on Wednesday that US oil production remained for a second week at 12.8 million barrels per day which is the highest it's been since March 2020. Um, Now, Baker Hughes' weekly oil rig count shows an almost constant decline in the number of oil and gas rigs in operation um, since the start of the year. So in numbers, producing U.S. oil rigs in March 2020, around 680. Producing U.S. oil rigs in August 2023 was at 512. Yet producing same amount of sort of crude oil. So what do you make of this data, Osama? Thank you so much, Angela. I think it's a very interesting question and you have to look at it from a different perspective. So there are three or four main reasons for this. First of all, we all know that this year has been quite good for the big oil or the the oil producers in that they, 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 they registered record profits recently in the previous year. So higher oil prices certainly has incentivized uh, oil producers to produce more. However, as you mentioned, this is happening with the reduced amounts of rigs, uh, which is primarily because of, uh, first, the well productivity has gone up recently due to technological improvements and also because of the recent uh, you know, learnings from the oil price war and how to uh, keep afloat during the uh, uh, you know, lower oil prices, uh, oil price uh, 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 time period. So that is the first thing. Secondly, drills, a drill but uncompleted wells, the ducks, they have gone up. The number of ducks going up has also uh, been uh, one of the contributing factors to this. And thirdly, refracts. There seems to be because so you know that there is a lot of uh, focus right now on uh, environmental friendly uh, technology and environmental friendly ways, um, all the while keeping uh, oil oil production oil supply the same. So refrax comes to the rescue, and the amount of refrax and the oil recovery being recovered from refrax that has also gone up. So these are the four or five reasons primarily contributing to the increased or sustained oil supply despite uh, a fall in oil rigs. And Osama, you and I have talked a lot about oil prices in the past. Is it going to hit ninety dollars at times? Is it go, is it going to reach a hundred? Go over a hundred? You, you know, my thoughts are, you know, obviously we're at this eighty to eighty five dollars a barrel level in August, as we were talking about as well. But what's your stance on oil prices in the short and the longer term? Well, Angela, uh, you and I have, uh, you know, that I have remained a bear throughout the start of this year, and. W- I mean, I know there has been some spikes, some extraordinarily swings to the upside in the oil prices, but we saw that despite this recent rally, oil prices failed to break the $90 psychological mark. And now this, so there are this, there is this physical market and then there are paper markets. When you talk about fundamentals, and I'm going to talk about fundamentals uh, for now, you see that all the fundamentals, all the major global economic indicators that are significant contributors to uh, prospective demand increase, they're all down. They're down to extraordinary levels. For instance, um, Eurozone's uh, PMI is at a 38-month low, lowest level. Germany is about to enter a second recession. The construction activity in the country is going down. You look at China. Yesterday, Chinese economic figures came out, and the factory output has shrunk for another month. It's been consecutive, I think, six or seven months that this is happening. The official and non-official PMIs are below 50, indicating a contraction. The, if you look at US, the largest economy in the world, their economic indicators, starting from supply, industrial supply of electricity uh, to ISM manufacturing, to leading conference boards, leading economic indicator, to inverse uh, uh, you know, uh, treasury yields, 
all of these indicators clearly latently point towards a global economic slowdown. Then you have the other markets, which are the paper markets. And in the paper markets, it happens a lot of time that fundamentals are ignored and sentiment reigns supreme. And at times there is uh, this thing called overrepresentativeness of good news. And that is what I think was happening recently. You had OPEC plus uh, promising uh, to keep the production cuts. You had, uh, uh, you know, uh, China cutting down its interest rate, quelling the fears of investors and things like that, that led to the rally. And I wrote that at that point that this rally is not sustainable. I, for now, in the short run to the medium to longer run, uh, remain on my various stance. I think there might be a spike due to the hurricanes we are facing right now. However, from the medium to uh, longer ra- uh, longer term, I think prices will head down. I think if there is a proper recession in the major economies in the world, we might see oil heading to mid-60s before the end of the year, or otherwise in the mid-70s for sure. Wow. Okay. So mid-60s before the end of the year. Uh, okay. So how should investors Osama be positioning themselves whilst oil markets remain so volatile? I think it's better to take short, not short as in they should sell, but I think it's better to trade on a shorter term rather than a longer run right now, because there seems to be an extraordinary amount of uncertainty and volatility across the world. Um, You don't know uh, whether there would be a geopolitical flashpoint that will just take oil prices to into the triple digit uh, area, or there would be some news regarding the Chinese economy that would plunge the oil prices back to uh, 60s or 70s. So I think traders should keep a keen eye on the large, second largest economy of the world, that is China, continue to follow its indicators. I think they're not looking really good at the moment. Plus manufacturing activity in the US and the Eurozone, because oil is, you know, is, the, is the strategic component that lubricates the factory of the world and that is and the the uh, this uh, the impact is shown in the manufacturing data right so eurozone manufacturing data us manufacturing data chinese manufacturing data demand in taiwan um, uh, sorry japan south korea and things like that so global economic indicators pertaining to the real economy not the financial economy should be keenly observed to track the trajectory of prices in the in the in, in moving forwards Brilliant, Osama. Thank you. Well, you t- you went through fundamentals there. You've gone through as well the economic data to keep across. Uh, but just one more question on economic data. Uh, next week, is there anything particular that you're looking out for? There, one, there is a bunch of data coming out from the US and Eurozone as well. Uh, I, I, for one, do not uh, subscribe to the idea of looking at a particular indicator. As I, as I said, I'll be looking at uh, a whole buffet of indicators, you know, and which will include economic data coming out of the U.S. in terms of inflation, economic data coming out of Eurozone in terms of manufacturing, and uh, some economic data from uh, China, especially regarding the oil imports. Okay, Osama Rizvi, energy analyst and economic analyst as well. Thank you ever so much for your insight. As always, always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much for joining us on IGTV. <music>